The topic I'm going to talk about today is whether spiral galaxies are proof that the universe was created less than 10,000 years ago. It's been a while since I did a Young Earth creationism claim, so I wanted to aim at one of their really top tens, literally. Dr. Russell Humphreys, PhD, at least that's how he's billed, the doctor and the PhD, is a Young Earth creationist and an astronomer, and many years ago he assembled a top ten list of reasons that Young Earth creationism is true. The very first item on that list is, galaxies wind themselves up too fast. The claim, to really quote verbatim, goes like this. The stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way, rotate about the galactic center with different speeds, the inner ones rotating faster than the outer ones. The observed rotation speeds are so fast that if our galaxy were more than a few hundred million years old, it would be a featureless disk of stars instead of its present spiral shape. Yet our galaxy is supposed to be at least 10 billion years old. Evolutionists call this the winding up dilemma, which they have known about for 50 years. They have devised many theories to try to explain it, each one failing after a brief period of popularity. The same winding up dilemma also applies to other galaxies. For the last few decades, the favorite attempt to resolve the dilemma has been a complex theory called density waves. The theory has conceptual problems, has to be arbitrarily and very finely tuned, and lately has been called into serious question by the Hubble Space Telescope's discovery of very detailed spiral structure in the central hub of the Whirlpool Galaxy, M51. Spiral galaxies are generally medium to large-sized congregations of stars. They have either a bulge in the center or a bar in the center. The bulk of the galaxy is a disk, which is much wider than it is thick, and this disk contains spiral arms, the arms emanating from the central bulge or bar. The feature in question in creationist circles is these subjectively beautiful spiral arms themselves. How are they still there if the universe is old? The trick is that these arms are not solid. It's not like you have a length of string on a table that starts out straight, you put your fingers in the middle and twist so that it winds up around itself. That's not how spiral arms form. Rather, they're a visual manifestation of another process, much like water spiraling down a drain. Just as with water spiraling down a drain, where any given water molecule may be a part of the density wave at one moment and not the next, it is not the case that stars either always exist within or without of a spiral density arm. Instead, the arms are continuously picking up stars and losing others. What the arms represent are just a density wave. The common analogy is to think of cars on a highway. You may be driving along with many dozens or hundreds of meters between you and the car in front of you. Then, for no apparent reason, you start to get much closer to the car in front of you, despite traveling at the same speed. Then, for the next several kilometers, there may be only 5 to 10 meters between you and the car ahead of you, assuming that you're a safe driver. Afterwards, traffic seems to thin out again, and again there's a large distance between you and the next car. What you've just experienced is a density wave. You are a star, traveling the road that is in orbit around the galaxy, and every now and then you find yourself in a density wave where you have to slow down. The mechanism that perpetuates the density waves, why they don't just dissipate, is that as a star approaches a density wave, it will speed up slightly due to the gravity of the stars that are there. Then, as a star is about to leave a density wave, it will slow down just a little bit, again because of the higher gravity there. So these arms, these density waves, don't just smooth out over time, they self-perpetuate. How did the spiral arms go there in the first place? Well, the main idea here is that all you need is a disk of stars. Stars closest to the center of the disk need to rotate faster than those near the edge, just like planets in our solar system, where Mercury's velocity around the sun is much faster than Earth's. This can easily set up the initial differential rotation, as in stuff is rotating at different speeds, that is needed to start these density waves to form. In addition to this, stars do not orbit on circular paths, rather on elliptical ones, which is of course Kepler's first law. 
When farthest from the center, their velocity will be at its slowest, which is Kepler's second law. When you have just a few extra stars traveling a little bit slower in some parts of a differentially rotating disk, then you get spiral patterns. For what it's worth, it should also be mentioned that this is something that comes naturally in simulations of spiral galaxies and other kinds of rotating disks. For example, when I'm doing simulations of Saturn's rings, I start out with a random, uniform distribution of ring particles. After running the simulation in orbit around Saturn, after about four to six orbits, density wakes have formed with very few particles between them. At any given time step, one particle may be a member of a density wave, but a few time steps later, it may have left the density wave. But the density wave itself, as a structure, still exists. Galaxies are probably a little bit more complicated than Saturn's rings, and you have complications like gas drag and other things, but the basic idea remains. Now that I've effectively explained why the creationist claim is wrong, let's go back to it and see what else could be learned. To quote from a source other than Russell Humphreys, quote, stars closer to the center of a spiral galaxy orbit the galaxy faster than stars farther away. Over many millions of years, the difference in orbital rates should wind the spiral tighter and tighter. We do not see any evidence for this in galaxies of different ages. End quote. And that's from the Creation Wiki website. The problem with this is that it rests upon the unstated major premise that density waves are physical parts of galaxies that contain a set of stars that is unchanging. That way, the differential rotation will cause them to wind up into a featureless disk, and as I've already explained, that is simply not the case. Galaxies are not like figure skaters with uh, solid arms attached to them. You also don't have to fine-tune the density wave physics to get them to actually happen, contrary to Humphreys and others' claims. It really just happens naturally. Another problem is the time scale. Russ Humphreys may be correct when he places a maximum age of only a few hundred million years on his fallacious understanding of the theory of spiral galaxies, as in, if Humphreys is right in that spiral galaxies would wind up, he also might be right in it would happen in about a few hundred million years. But many others, including the one that I just quoted from the Creation Wiki, will say many millions of years, or even thousands of years. Those timescales are simply too short. The Sun takes about 250 million years to orbit around the galaxy once, as anyone who watches Monty Python should know. Even if you accept the faulty understanding of the way that the spiral arms work, there's no way that galaxies would wind up within less than 1% of the time that it takes a star halfway from the center, which is about where we are, to complete a single orbit. This is actually a fairly good example, like comets, about how creationists often don't understand the timescales involved with astronomical phenomena. On the Creation Wiki website, they have a page that is an attempted refutation of the Talk Origins page on spiral galaxies that is, of course, itself a refutation of the creationist model. I'm going to refute the refutation of the refutation of the claim. The very first response to the explanation of spiral galaxies that I've given is, quote, First of all, this is a theory, not a proven fact. This is, to put it quite nicely, a bogus argument. The next response is, furthermore, it does not come from first principles, but is simply the latest in a series of theories designed to save the long-ago theoretical system from reality. Well, yeah, it does come from first principles. You're wrong. Try running a computer model of spiral galaxies, and you'll see it work pretty darn well after only plugging in the first principle of, like, gravity. The next part of that, the series of theories, is not as derogatory as they intend. Science progresses. If one theory has explained all the data to date, but then the next piece of data can't be explained by that theory, then a new one has to be developed. Hence, you have a series of theories. This, of course, is in contrast to young Earth creationism, where evidence that refutes their quote-unquote theory is simply tossed out the door. The final part of the sentence is, series of theories designed to save the long-ago theoretical system from reality. That's simply an attempt to paint what I've presented as an argument from final consequences, which it simply isn't. 
An argument from final consequences is where you start by saying your answer is true, therefore your premise or evidence or whatever you need to back up your already known answer is also true. That's not the case here. The final part of their refutation is, quote, Hubble images of the Whirlpool Galaxy, aka M51, and others show that they are too tightly wound near the core to be explained by the density wave theory. On the other hand, the wind-up model predicted this tight winding perfectly, end quote. This also is going back to Russell Humphrey's original writing, and it's a misreading of the technical literature. The scientific paper in this case is to a Zeritsky et al. paper from 1993 entitled Inner Spiral Structure of the Galaxy M51. It was published in Nature. It clearly states, quote, The coherence of the arms over this large radial range challenges current theories of spiral structure. End quote. So right there, they seem to be backing up the creationism, or the young earth creationism claim. But the next sentence is, We suggest a combination of several mechanisms, such as the interaction of M51 with the neighboring galaxy, NGC 5195, forcing by the central bar, or distortions from density waves, is required to generate the observed structure. Nowhere does it, quote, call into serious question the spiral density wave theory by the Hubble Space Telescope's discovery of the very detailed spiral structure of the central hub of the Whirlpool Galaxy M51, to quote Humphreys, as opposed to the Creation Wiki website. Rather, it states pretty much that just using a simple model that I've laid out, like you would get in an introductory astronomy class, does not tell the entire story. It does tell a lot of it, it tells the basics of it, and it's enough to understand most of what's going on. But you do need other information in order to explain every single detail of the observations. Now by way of a wrap-up, this is a fairly classic Young Earth creationist claim, at least dating back to the 1980s, and it gets brought up from time to time. It rests on a key misunderstanding of what spiral arms actually are, and even if that misunderstanding were actually correct, the timescales of how long it takes a galaxy to rotate once would still easily allow for a universe to be at least several hundred million years old, if not over a billion. 